Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obueda. I like us to look at Jeremiah 31, verse 14. Hmm, I like this. I like this scripture. Wow. <laughs> I like us to, I need to write it down before I, I, I read it. This is beautiful for me. <laughs> I'm reading it from the New Living Translation. Listen to this. <laughs> the priest will enjoy abundance. <laughs> The Bible said in Revelation chapter 1, it said, We're kings and priests unto our God. It said, The priests will enjoy abundance, and my people will fast. Will, sorry, my people will feast on my good gifts. I, the Lord, have spoken. Wow. The priests will enjoy abundance. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel like preaching from here. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we're in a prayer meeting, but may not, may not feel like preaching. <laughs> Is that the priest will enjoy abundance from the NLT But let, let, let me look at it again from the message Bible. Let me let me see. Let me see the message. Hmm. Hmm. I will make sure that the priest get three square meals a day. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. <laughs> they were having fun. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. Wow. Only God can show us this scripture this morning. I'll make sure that, that their priests get three square meal a day and that my people have more than enough. Mm. Mm, wow, wow, this is good. Thank God I came for the prayer meeting. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, let, let, me, let me read it from the Amplified Bible. I will satisfy fully the life of the priest with abundance of offerings shared with them. My people will be satisfied. With my goodness, says the Lord. Wow. Let's let, let me read. Uh, hmm, thank you, Lord. I'm going to somewhere with this. Don't bother about me reading all of this translation. I'm going somewhere. Amen. <laughs> let's uh, let's read the the NLT translation. The priest will enjoy abundance. Now, let, let me share briefly on this. I know we're in a prayer meeting, but uh, I think this message will be for the next uh, 10 minutes or thereabouts. When the Lord said you will enjoy abundance, it means abundance is already available. Abundance is available already. Abundance is already available. So he said, he said you will enjoy abundance. Abundance is his will. You see, there is no joy in lack. There is no, you, you, you can achieve the will of God in lack. When he said the priest will enjoy abundance, it is his will that the priest continue to help others and be a blessing. The priest will enjoy abundance because it's part of God's plan for his life. And you are the priest. In the New Testament, we are 
royal priesthood. We are the chosen generation. So God said you're going to enjoy abundance. That is what God said. You're going to enjoy abundance. So it doesn't matter what you're going through right now, there is abundance with your name on it. It doesn't matter what your finances is right now, there is an abundance. So the first step to enjoying abundance is to see God as the God of abundance. My God is the God of abundance. He will make a way. You have to see him as El Shaddai. The God who is more than enough. The God who is able to exceed expectation. So in Jeremiah 31, verse 14, the priests will enjoy abundance and my people will feast on my good gifts. I, the Lord, have spoken. When you see God as your source, it will be difficult for you to be stressed out. It will be difficult for you to stress out. Once you see God as your source, that will be the end of stress. Because stress comes from disappointment, frustration, loss of hope, inability to trust God can open door for stress. When you see God as your source, your joy will increase. Your faith will be strengthened. Your expectation will become a reality. When you see God as your source, your job is not your source. Your business is not your source. God is your source. Your business, your job, whatever you do is a channel. But the source is God. So if you're going to enjoy abundance, the first thing you have to do is to see God as your source. Psalm 23, verse 1. The son said, the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't say my job. He didn't say my skill. He didn't say my ability. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. When we get to a point where we see God as our source, no frustration can stop us. No position can stop us. So the first thing you need to establish if you're going to enjoy abundance is to see God as your source. The psalmist said, I look unto the hills from whence cometh my help, for my help comes from the Lord. Where does your help come from? Your help comes from the Lord. If your help comes from the Lord, you won't stress out. You won't burn out. You won't be nagging. You won't be complaining and be frustrated. No. There is rest in trusting God. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's a word for someone. There is rest in trusting God. One of the ways your health can be secured is when you trust God. Or 98% of health challenges begin when people fail to trust God. 98% of health challenges begin when people fail to trust God. Worry, fear, anxiety, hopelessness can affect the immune system, can affect the body system. One of the major Cause of sickness and disease is worry, fear, anxiety, hopelessness. When, when people are hopeless, it affects their mind. This is why emotional health is the key to physical health, bodily health. When you're healthy emotionally, it helps your body. 
And one of the keys to emotional health is to renew your mind daily with God's word. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for this. When you start worrying, when a person begins to worry, worry about this, worry about that, they are opening door for sickness. Because that worry can begin to affect the way you think. This is why depression is not good. <laughs> Let me tell you this. I choose to be happy. Not because all my dreams have come to pass. <laughs> they say a healing for someone this morning. I choose to be glad. Not because everything is okay. But because God is a good God. You see, we need to get out of this mentality that everything has to be perfect before we become happy and be glad. In imperfection, we can be happy. And, and this is the key to enjoying the abundance. This area of life may not be working out very well, but we trust God that it's going to work out well. And then we rest. In rest, your health get better. But in anxiety and worry, you're opening door for the body system to shut down. Many people don't know this. Let me give you an example. Have you noticed most times when you stress and worry about something, there is how you feel emotionally? There is how your body, your body is not being drained. One of the things that take energy away from you is worry. When people worry, they become tired. Most times that people become so tired and fatigue sets in and you know, they are so tired. There are issues unresolved. When the word of God said, lay aside every weight, they are things that slow down your energy. Hmm. Wow. They are things that affect you. So the, when the joy of the Lord becomes your focus, you get better mentally, you get better emotionally, you get better spiritually. When, when the word of God becomes your focus, that was why the scripture said, don't be conformed to this world but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because if your mind is not renewed with God's word, every thought of stress will lead to stress. <laughs> Let me show this to you. You make the decision to be happy even when you experience disappointment. <laughs> You make the decision to be glad. Even, you see, you, you, you can determine how the next person is going to behave towards you. But you can determine how you respond towards their behavior. <laughs> you, you'll not be able to determine how your, your husband, your friend, your business partner may behave towards you, but you can choose to respond right. For we to enjoy abundance, we need to give up worry. We have to give up worry. Because in the atmosphere of worry, you don't see what God is doing. In the atmosphere of worry, you don't see what God is doing. For you to enjoy abundance, you must see God as your source. That will relieve you from anxiety, pressure, frustration. Lord, I trust you. I know you're going to make your way. I thank you. All things are going to work out for good. Everything is going to work out for good. I trust you. Number two, if you're going to enjoy abundance, you need to develop what is called abundance consciousness. We need to have abundance consciousness. What would that consciousness do for you? It will cause you to relax. <laughs> Hallelujah. My God will supply all my need. Abundance consciousness. 
My God will supply all my need. Abundance consciousness. My God will make a way. Abundance consciousness. With God, all things are possible. Abundance consciousness. God is able to make all grace abound towards me. Abundance consciousness. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what I think nor ask according to his power that work gets in me, abundance consciousness. So you have to walk in this revelation of abundance consciousness. There is an abundance. The account may be zero right now. It will not remain zero all the days of your life. The situation may look like it's dragging you into the pit, but you have the victory. So it doesn't matter what you see when you start speaking. It is no longer the way it is. Wow. I want to say that again. It doesn't matter how the situation looks. When you start speaking God's word, the situation does not look, does not remain the same. There is a shift going on. And God said, let there be light. The darkness couldn't resist it. Can I say this to you? Abundance consciousness is the key to high self-esteem. When you have this mentality that there is an abundance for me, there's an abundance with my name on it, it leads to high self-esteem. You don't look frustrated. You don't look stupid. You trust God. God, I trust you. <laughs> God, I trust you. Can you trust God even when you don't feel like it? We don't trust God based on feeling. We just trust God. Our feeling may be saying, no, 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 you can't trust him. No, I trust him. When the voice of your feeling is loud, keep introducing God's word into your spiritual system. Keep introducing, when the scripture said, don't be conformed to this world, be yet transformed by the renewing of your mind. It simply means keep introducing God's word. Keep bringing in God's word into you. Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. So if you have the word of God in you richly, Colossians 3.16, if you have the word of God in you richly, it, it helps to resolve the fear. The fear of what is going to happen. What is the future going to be? My God will make a way. This is a word for someone today. You don't have to be afraid of it. So it's time to cultivate abundance consciousness. See yourself walking in abundance. See yourself having abundance. See the ministry having abundance. All our bills are paid. All, all our needs are met. Hallelujah. If you're going to enjoy abundance, you must believe in the law of distribution. The law of distribution. We're going to have to call it the principle of giving. The law of distribution, our ability to distribute can also determine multiplication. The law of distribution, our ability to distribute will determine multiplication. So we, we, we believe God to become aggressive givers, major kingdom financiers that will move things forward in the kingdom. We, we have to see ourselves bigger than where we are. You need to see yourself that you're bigger than where you are. I'm a major kingdom distributor. You have to say that to yourself. The more you say that, the more you come into that. I'm a major kingdom distributor. I'm a major kingdom distributor. In the name of Jesus, I am financing kingdom projects. God give us seed to the sower. I receive seed to sow. I notice sometimes that we believe God for houses, for cars, for jobs, for businesses, but we don't believe God for seed to sow most times. 
it's time to believe God for seed to sow. I'm believing God for a million dollars to sow. That should be someone's prayer. I'm believing God for $10,000 to sow. I'm believing God for seed to sow. You see, if, if you get to this point where you start believing God for seed to sow, it is an indication that you're flourishing in abundance consciousness. I'm believing God for seed to sow. The seed may not be there right now, but I have faith that the harvest is coming in and it's going to be a seed. Becoming a distributor. You know, I didn't plan to share all of this. We're just praying and then who came across that scripture, the Holy Ghost just start bringing this up for us this morning. But let me say this to you. God wants you to enjoy abundance. Abundance has a purpose. Principle number four. Abundance has a purpose. God brings you into abundance for the purpose of advancing his vision. Abundance has a purpose. God brings you into abundance as you can move his vision forward. This is why God is bringing you into abundance. As you can bring his, the, the vision into manifestation, you can produce great results because there is abundance of a focus. There is a purpose why God is saying it's time to enjoy abundance. As we enjoy abundance, we should also maximize the purpose of abundance. And that's where we'll flourish. That's where we'll prosper. Enjoy the purpose of abundance. The reason for this abundance is that I can become relevant. I can become a person of honor. I can become a person of power. I can become a person that can rise and be more effective and more productive in the things of the spirit and become strategic in the kingdom. The purpose of abundance is that I will take the lead in the right direction. And the Lord will have me say this to you. You don't have to worry about what is happening right now. Believe you are in your season of enjoying abundance. That's what to believe. It doesn't matter what you're seeing right now. You got to believe it. I have entered my season of abundance. This is my season of abundance. This is the season where things will grow by itself. This is the season where opportunities will exceed my expectation. This is the season where I'm going to enjoy preferential treatment. You are the first prophet of your life. As you say it, you're bringing it in. You're going to declare that. This is your season. This is your season. You're coming to a season of abundance. Everything is going to fall in place in this season. This is a word for someone today. If you see this season as the season of abundance, the toiling and the hard labor will cease. Lord, I thank you. I've come into a season of abundance. I will enjoy abundance. I read that scripture again, Jeremiah 31, verse 14. The priest will enjoy abundance. The priest will enjoy abundance. And you are the priest. You are the priest. The priest will enjoy abundance. You are the priest. You are the priest. You've been called into a life of abundance. You've been called into a life of abundance. You are the priest. You will enjoy abundance. I prophesy to you that you will continue to see multiplication, resources, abundance of resources, financial resources, material resources, human resources. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Abundance of resources. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we thank you. Abundance of resources. Thank you, our Father. In the name of Jesus, amen. You know, before I close, let me read this other scripture. We're talking about abundance. Watch this. One of the keys to enjoying is coming into abundance and 
seeing abundance is the key of thanksgiving. Being grateful to God, being thankful, being grateful for what you have, being grateful for where God is taking you to, being grateful. The next key is Jeremiah 30, verse 19. In Jeremiah 30, 19, he said, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry, I will multiply them. I will multiply them. So when you are grateful and thankful, God begins to multiply things. He begins to multiply things. I will multiply them. I will multiply them. Get ready. Begin to thank him. Begin to praise him. Don't be depressed. Don't be offended. Don't be angry. Don't be bitter. Don't be, don't nag. Be thankful. Be thankful. Be grateful. Look at, look for reasons to thank God. And he said he will multiply those who thank him. So honey, if you want multiplication, start your Thanksgiving right now. Don't wait for November to do Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving began this morning. Hallelujah. Start thanking him. <laughs> Don't wait for the day of Thanksgiving. Today is the day the Lord has made. We're going to thank him today. <laughs> Honey, begin to thank him. Praise him. Give him praise. As you praise him, he will multiply things. As you praise him, he will increase things. As you praise him, instead of being depressed, begin to praise him. Instead of worrying about it, give it over to him. Instead of feeling frustrated, thank him for where he has brought you to. There is something you have that someone is praying for right now to experience. Oh, God has blessed me. Let me thank him. Lord, I thank you. I give you praise. I give you worship. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, out of them that proceed thanksgiving, he will multiply. He said, and they shall not be few. As you praise him, you will not diminish. You will increase. They shall not be few. I will also glorify them. You see, as you begin to thank him, he will start glorifying you before men, before women, before people. And he said, and they shall not be small. Wow. <laughs> this is what Thanksgiving is going to do. That business will not be small. As you begin to thank God for that business, that business will not be small. That ministry will not be small. That, that finances will not be small. As you thank him, things will not remain the same. So Thanksgiving is a limitation breaker. Nothing breaks limitation like Thanksgiving. As you begin to thank God, the limitations will be broken. Multiplication will be in operation and nothing will diminish around you. Thank him, Lord, oh, thank you. Jesus will glorify you. Thank you for meeting our needs. Thank you for being our helper. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. If you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray this prayer with me, it means you're born again. The Holy Ghost will lead you from this day forward. I want to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Faithman Teachings on YouTube. And also, you can watch me on finishworktv.com. Finishworktv.com stream 24-7 every day, helping people around the world. Also, you can get my book on Amazon for the things you need to know about your future. Is available on Amazon.com. In the next one month, my book will be available. And then of my book is coming. The theme of that book is There is Greatness in You. There is Greatness in You is coming in the next one month. And you will read something that will change your story. So get ready for There is Greatness in You. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. If you want to partner with this ministry, you can go to finishworktv.com and slash give it. And give as the Spirit of God will lead you. On to my next broadcast, please don't forget this. There is greatness in you. And Jesus is coming soon. Bye-bye.